Hey guys, um, I want to cover a topic today that's something that I'm extremely passionate about if you follow me and if you know me well enough. Um, and it's something that comes up a lot in discussion with people who want advice or, you know, who are looking to take the next step in their fitness career, fitness journey, and that would be competing. So I kind of want to go over a few reasons of maybe why you should compete and why you should not compete. Um, I'm the type of person where if you ever ask me, you know, hey, I'm looking to compete, you know, what was, where should I start? What's the first thing I should do? I'm more than likely going to give you a forewarning um, about competing because it's not all the glitz and glam that you're going to see on Instagram and, you know, Facebook and YouTube, you know, we tend to post um, the positive side of competing and everything that comes with it, everything, you know, looking good and, and the flashy suits and, you know, the tan and everything else like that. But it's really not always all is cracked up to be and it's not for everybody. You know, there's a reason that everybody who's into fitness doesn't compete. So what I want to do in this video is I have about, I think, 11 tips um, to competing. I want to cover maybe five or six of those in this video. Depending on how you guys respond, then maybe I'll come back with the remaining tips. Um, or maybe I'll just post them depending on what you guys say. So uh, let's just get right into it. So the first thing you want to do when you're thinking about competing, if you don't already have one, is find a qualified coach. Um, somebody who you trust. Um, you know, somebody who has proof that they are a great, you know, competitive coach, you know, not just somebody at your gym who looks good, not just somebody who says, oh yeah, I write meal plans, you know, somebody who has experience prepping people for shows, um, maybe somebody who's actively, um, you know, really worked with people over years time and not just, you know, oh, I helped this person get ready for their first show and this person get ready for their first show. You know, um, you really want somebody who's qualified because, Competing for a show and the everyday dieting and meal plan and everything like that is not the same thing. Um, they do not compare at all. It's apples to oranges. So you want somebody who can prep you for a show and who knows what they're doing. Um, because it's a lot of money that's going to go into it. You know, you're going to spend a lot of time and effort trying to get your body ready. And you want to make sure that you're putting, you know, your competitive career in the right hands uh, as somebody who's going to guide you in that way. Um, you also, you know, want to ask them what you can expect from them. A lot of times you guys might sign up with a coach who um, maybe they don't let you know, like, hey, I'm not available all day, every day. And you only hear from them once a week, you know, especially for you first time competitors. That's not enough. You, you won't even know what questions to ask. You want somebody who's literally going to hold your hand through the process. And even for more seasoned competitors, you know, you would like that when you ask your coach a question that they're going to respond in a timely manner and not five days later, you know, um, cause that time adds up. And when it comes to competing, anybody who's ever competed before knows that, especially as you get closer to your show, timing becomes very crucial. So, um, you want to be able to know what you can expect from them in all aspects, their training style, communication style. Uh, like I said, anybody that they worked with before, don't be scared to reach out to their clients, um, that they're posting on their social media pages or whatever and ask them, you know, like, Hey, what is this guy or what is this girl's style like? You know, what what should I expect from them? How do you like it? You know, things like that. It's not it's it's, it's almost like if you were going to go buy a new TV or any type of product, you know, you're going to ask around and look at the reviews and see what people are saying. So, um I highly encourage you guys to do that because like I said, you don't want to waste your money on that. Um and then really just like a personal trainer, you know, finding a coach it's a relationship. It's a personal relationship. So you want to make sure that you guys are going to gel well. You know, it doesn't work every time. You're not going to find a coach and, you know, like any coach isn't going to be the coach for you, whether they know all the information or not. Um, I can say that my late coach, Herman Steele, upon meeting him and looking at him, he was not the person that I thought that I would be working with, you know, um, in my career. He's definitely not the person I thought would take me to the level that I'm at now. Um, and that's just from sheer, you know, judging a book by their cover, you know, but in the end, we built a really strong relationship and it really helps when it comes to prepping for a show, because like everybody says, it's really cliche, but trust the process. And if you trust the person, it's much easier to trust that process. Um, so moving on to the next step would be finding a show. Uh, a lot of people say that they want to kind of prep 
for the show or kind of train and then like once they look good enough they'll get ready for the show and I highly discourage that for one reason because that will never happen you know it will never come you'll constantly be like okay well I'm not ready yet so I'll just keep going you know and before you know it two years will pass and you haven't done a show the best thing to do is to go ahead you know um, go on to your NPC news online or go on to your uh, whatever like Texas bodybuilding is ours so for Texas or I'm in Colorado now so I have to find a new one but um, just go and see what shows are coming up that are close to you that are local you know make sure you give yourself enough time first-time competitors give yourself about 12 weeks at least um, a lot of times you guys might want to shoot for 16 weeks just so it can be very gradual and not something where you're gonna be really extreme in dieting and then fall back down once the show comes so um, and then you know talk to your coach about how long they think you're gonna need to prepare your coach depending on how lean you already are might say hey we'll be good with an 8 to 10 week prep um, if you've never done this before and you've never even given thought to the idea of competing and maybe you're holding on to a little bit more fluff than than what you would like to be holding on to do not be afraid to shoot for a 12 to 16 week prep don't try to do what other people do um, you might see you know pros or even seasoned competitors do like a six week prep and what you have to remember is that one they're seasoned so they've been doing it for a while their body kind of knows when they're going to do it number two look at their body fat percentage is this the type of person that walks around year round with a six pack or is this somebody who binge eats after a show gains about 30 pounds and then has to lose it all again you know so don't try to compare yourself to somebody else when you're picking a show or when it comes to um, how long it's gonna take you to prepare for that show I always say you know like the more gradual you can come into a show the better you won't rebound as hard you won't be as cranky you know people will be able to deal with you you'll have more leeway in your meals you won't be as strict um, and you'll really be able to learn more about your body during the process so We've covered two, finding a coach and then finding a show. Um, the next one that I have is uh, registering with your league, whether that's NPC or WBFF or whatever um, league you're looking to compete in. Make sure you go ahead and register for that and you check out the registration costs because all of this stuff is going to start to add up. You know, you've um, purchased a coach or, you know, you're having somebody train you. Um, you're picking your show. There's a registration cost for the show. Then there's a registration fee for, you know, registering with that league. You know, everything is going to start to add up. So make sure that you already know that, hey, I got to register for this league or NPC or um, WBFF or any of the other ones that are out there, GBO and some other ones that are out there. Um, and then maybe ask yourself or your coach or go online and Google the difference between all the different leagues and divisions because they do all offer different uh, criteria and divisions and you know things like that and they're all different um the only way that I will say if you guys are looking at like the Jeremy Wendy is Nicole Wilkins Candy Lewis um, Phil Heath and all the big time people the only way to get to the IFBB is through the NPC okay so you're not gonna make it to IFBB through WBFF or these natural leagues or anything else that's out there the only way to make it to that status is through the NPC so maybe if that's your goal don't waste your time with the other things <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that out there real quick um, and then you know depending on what division you want to do which organization is right for you like everybody knows the WBFF is more um, they're more like model-esque you know like uh, very like diva like um, they have costumes you know it's almost like a pageant and then you have you know NPC and IBB which is more traditional bodybuilding um, with the newer divisions thrown in like women's physique uh, bikini men's classic physique things like that so you know kind of look and see what you'd be interested in um, and shoot for that you know don't worry about what everybody else is doing and the final tip that I want to cover for this video at least just so it's not so long um, is goal setting for your show you know so set goals on your personal limitations you know um, if you're somebody like I said where fitness hasn't always been your thing but you really want to get on stage just to prove that you can do it you're probably not gonna set out to say hey I want to win the show I want to qualify for nationals and I want to go for my pro card you know your goal might just be hey I want to get in the best shape that I've ever been in in my life and I want to prove that I can start something and finish it you know because this is not gonna be easy um, and then for you guys who are extremely competitive uh, all you people who were athletes in high school and throughout college you might shoot for, hey, I want to place top five, top three. You know, I want to qualify for nationals and I'm going to shoot for a national show. You know, so set goals 
based on your limitations because if you don't have a goal going into your show regardless of how small that goal is or how large that goal is or where it stands in between being an amateur and a pro or whatever you're not going to do well in your prep if you don't have some type of expectation for yourself then you're really just going to kind of throw it out the window you know because prep is going to start to get hard and when it does is when it's really you know testing you when it's really worth it um and if you're not really grounded mentally with a goal in mind then I'm not sure that you're going to be able to make it through your prep the way that you would like to or the way that your coach would probably like for you to do. Um, and then, you know, like I said, it's not easy prepping for a show. So one thing that you want to do is make sure you stay motivated. Um, I had a friend who used to say that motivating yourself and, you know, getting inspiration from other people is much like taking a daily vitamin um, and that you need to give it to yourself daily. You know, it's not just going to come to you. You have to keep reminding yourself why you're doing it. You know, what was your goal? You know, this is for you. It's not for your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your parents, your coach, you know, your ex, whatever. This is all for you. And you need to remember that um, throughout the process because it will get tough. It will get hard and you'll start to question the process. You'll start to question your ability to do it. You'll start to question, maybe I shouldn't do this show. Maybe I should push it back into another show, you know, and you just got to remember, um, why you set out to do it in the first place, especially for you guys out there who aren't really, you know, all about winning and maybe qualifying for nationals and things like that. Um, I think it's a little bit tougher. You know, it's a goal that you set for yourself and you're not really giving yourself a deadline, but I think that you should. Otherwise, you'll just kind of keep putting it off and putting it off um, until that time comes. So I just want to quickly go over. I'm cheating a little bit. I wrote these notes down. So just quickly go over what I covered so far. And then, like I said, in the next video, um, I'll go over those final tips. So number one, finding a qualified coach. Remember that needs to be somebody that you trust, somebody who has done this before, somebody who can prove to you that they've worked with people that you, um, or people that you know are at the level that you want to be at. Uh, for instance, I always look for a coach who is comfortable training uh, athletes naturally because if you're a coach and all of your athletes aren't natural, then I can't be sure that you're going to be comfortable or knowledgeable training me as a natural athlete. Um, number two, picking a show. So, you know, finding the date, you know, making sure you're giving yourself enough time to prep for that show. A lot of times people say, oh, I want to do a show in, in August and it's already the end of June. You know, you don't really have enough time unless you're already super lean and ready to go, unless you already have all your ducks in a row, you know, but make sure you're giving yourself enough time. Um, next, register for the league uh, that you're looking to compete in or just look into it so that you know what to expect, you know the criteria for that league, you know what that league expects, um, and just everything that comes with it. And the last one that we covered in this video is just goal setting for your show. Um, like I said, it can be anything as small as just stepping on that stage, you know, to as big as winning the title and winning overall and then qualifying for nationals, you know, and don't let anybody come in and say, oh, your goal is too small, or your goal is too big. Um, whatever your goal is, go for it, shoot for it, and then uh, do it well. So let me know what you guys think. Um, if you're in interested in getting the rest of these tips, let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like I have seven. Should have covered one more, but um, seven more tips. So if you guys want to get the rest of those tips for competing, the rest of these have to do more so with um, once you actually choose your show and you're ready to go, this is, these are the things that you're going to want to keep in mind, the things that are going to happen pre-show, during the show, and then when you're done competing, which is something that a lot of people don't think about. So if that's something that you guys want to get um, your hands on as far as information, then let me know. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know if you guys have any questions, and maybe I can get a head start and um, cover that in the next video. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for listening and tuning in, and I'll speak to you soon.